When creating miters, we have to consider the blade size and the material thickness. We're going to use this countertop that we used in the first video, Basic Miters. Now we're going to apply aprons to the four labeled edges. We're going to use the apron button from our machine toolbar. But before we do, there's two pieces of information that we need to have set. One is the saw blade. Verify or select the correct saw blade by checking it from the tool select button. You should also know the approximate diameter of the blade that you will be using for the miters. This blade is about 15 inches in diameter and we still have a one inch safety distance tolerance set. The material thickness is very important when we do miters. We'll at least verify or change the material thickness in the auto toolpath settings. Here you can choose either 2cm or 3cm or you can choose custom and enter the value or thickness in inches. When the value is correct you can right click or choose finish to close the auto toolpath window. Now the proper calculations can be used when applying the miters or aprons and also programming them. So I'm going to start by choosing the apron icon. Here I can set all the parameters of my apron. I'll set a 3 inch tall apron and I'll cut it at about 45 and a half degrees. The offset distance is the distance that the apron will be placed away from the countertop. And then, as prompted, I will select each edge of my countertop to apply the apron to. The miter attributes are automatically applied to both the countertop's edge and the edge of the apron as I create it. The two aprons on the inside corner will have to be moved. I'll move them with the move parts from the Park Industries machine's toolbar. I can click and pick a new position. I'm simply moving them out of the way for now because most of the ends of the aprons will need miters as well, as we saw in the first video. We'll take a closer look to see where we need to apply undercut and overcut miters. I'll start with the undercut by selecting the undercut miter icon. Use the same angle value that you used when you applied the aprons. In my case, I used 45 and a half degrees. And then as prompted, I'll select each edge or end of the apron to apply the miter to. You may get an error if you accidentally select the red miter line instead of the proper end or edge of the part. If this happens, OK the error and repeat the miter command. Now these ends of the apron need overcuts, so we can go choose overcut from the toolbar. To get the same effect of having a gap at the back side or non-polished side of the material, I'll change the setting or angle to 44 and a half degrees. And then I'll apply the overcut miters to the ends of my aprons. If we've made a mistake, of applying miters to the wrong edges of the wrong parts, we can always undo and of course we can redo. Otherwise, the only proper way to remove a miter from the edge of a part is to pick the miter icon again and select the edge of the part that has the miter applied that you want to remove. Make sure you select the edge of the part and not the miter line itself. 
since I really do need a miter at that end, I will verify that I have the correct angle set and reapply it. Now let's zoom out so that we can draw a rectangle to represent our material or slab to put our parts on. I'll choose to draw a rectangle and I'll start it at 0, 0, which of course represents the corner of my table. And then I'll type the dimensions of my slab in the second corner fields. Now I'll slide these two inside corner aprons out of the way temporarily. And then I'll move the countertop and the end aprons together as one into a desired location on my slab. This way I can keep the spacing and positioning in between the parts as they are laid out. I'll just set this end of at one and one inch in from the corner of the slab. There are a few things to think about before moving the other aprons into a position. There are some parameters set in the background that will affect where we place or position our parts. One important parameter that we set earlier was the material thickness. This will be used in calculations of blade over travel. And it should have been set before applying any miters. The others were set in the parameters of the blade. When we go to tool select and we find the blade that's selected and we choose it to see the properties, we can verify and adjust as needed. I'll leave all these default settings and just explain them as we go along. You can use whatever name you'd like to call a blade. And the tool numbering system may vary by each particular machine. The diameter of the blade is used for calculating over travel, so its value should be fairly close to the actual size. The RPM and the cutting feed rates should come from the manufacturer of the blade. The rapid plane value is the distance between the bottom of the blade and the top of the material when the machine rapids across in between cuts. And we have the final cut depth set at negative 0.125, so it will cut completely through the material and slightly into the bed of the table. And the blade curve is the thickness of the blade. The safety distance is also important when calculating blade over travel. I'll explain it in a minute. For now, just remember that the value is one. These values will be used both in a straight and miter application. The only ones that will be different are the feed rates because the blade is actually cutting more or thicker material when it's leaned at a 45 degree angle. Mitered cuts will also need more spacing in between because the blade's over travel will increase. To calculate the blade's over travel, draw a circle representing the diameter of the blade and then draw a rectangle representing the thickness of the material. Move the material in the blade so that the blade is an eighth inch below the material. Now the blade's over travel can be measured from the center of the blade to the intersection of the top of the material and the blade's diameter. So the physical over travel of this blade is a little over four inches. I'm going to round it up to four and a half. Then we have an additional one inch of safety. This is the value that we had set for safety distance in our blade settings. So I can leave my parts spaced at least five and a half inches away from each other so that they will get cut all the way through when cutting straight or at zero degrees. When the blade is angled for a miter, we'll need more distance. To figure out this distance, let's go back to the straight blade drawing. Then we can offset the top of the material 
up by half of the material thickness. That will represent the blade at a 45 degree miter. Now again, measure between the center of the blade and the intersection of the blade's diameter and the offset line. So in this case, the physical over-travel of the blade is almost 5 inches, and then we'll still add on the safety distance of 1. So I'll have to keep my parts with the mitered ends at least 6 inches apart from each other to get the miter cuts with the blade entirely through. There are a couple different ways we can apply this spacing. First, let's look at our areas of concern. In our current layout, there doesn't appear to be any conflicts. Our parts are far enough away from each other for the travel of the blade. Another thing we'll look at are the limits of our table template. If we turn it on or insert it into our drawing, we can verify that the miters are all within the boundaries. These miters are okay because the blade isn't tilted toward the center of the table on that edge. A quick and easy way to verify our part spacing is to use offset lines. If we choose offset and we set our distance to six inches, I will also make sure that these lines come out on construction so they're not accidentally cut. This area looks questionable, even though it looked okay with just the over travel of the saw blade. That's because our six inch offset line includes the one inch safety distance. Here we can see a small distance that may not get cut all the way through. We can apply tool paths to see. Miters will be cut the same as straight cuts. Just go to Auto Tool Path, select all your geometry, and finish. And then we can zoom in and we'll see that the miter cuts that were outside of the 6 inch reference line cut all the way through, where the miter cut that was partially past it did not get cut all the way through. We see this on this mitered edge as well. It's showing us where the blade had to stop and what didn't get cut. The Voyager was able to apply a tight cut to the straight edge. These cuts could have both been finished out with the saw jet and water jet mitering capabilities. Since we're only talking about saw blade cuts in this video, Let's undo the tool paths and reorganize our parts. For this, I'll use the quick tools from the Voyager toolbar. First, I'll rotate this apron 90 degrees and then move or slide it out of the way. Now I'm going to take this apron and move it into position, staying just slightly outside of my reference lines. I could make another offset line to locate this part, but instead I'll use the Join Parts tool so I can align my overcut mitered ends at the same time. I'll specify a distance of 6 inches, and then I'll select this end of this edge to be moved to this end of this edge. So now if we toolpath again, we'll see that all of the cuts we're able to saw completely through to the end of each part. And there is a basic layout for a basic mitering program. You can review or reorganize your cuts. We typically try to cut miters first since they have the most tool pressure. After confirming your order of cuts, you can send the G-code to machine as normal. Thank you for choosing Park Industries. Thanks.